The White Motor Company was an American manufacturer of automobiles, trucks, buses, and agricultural tractors from 1900 to 1980. The company also made bicycles, roller skates, automatic lathes, and sewing machines. Prior to World War II, the company was based in Cleveland, Ohio. Truck manufacturing, after the First World War, the White Motor Company began to manufacture only trucks. At the end of 1918, the production of three- and five-ton asterisk trucks of the TJ and TG series models with Carden gears began. At the end of 1919, a new generation of trucks with a carrying capacity of 0. 0.75 to 5 tons was created, which already had digital indices. By the early 1920s, white trucks were found throughout the United States. In addition to individual owners and transport companies, the cars were popular with the authorities of large American cities, who used them in the police, fire department, street washing, garbage collection, and for other purposes. In 1921 to 1927 the range of manufactured trucks consisted of eight main models, from the one-ton white 15 to the seven, five-ton white 52. In 1931, the production of 600 series vehicles with a carrying capacity of one, five to nine tons was launched. All of them were equipped with six-cylinder overhead valve gasoline engines ranging from 54 to 108 horsepower. In 1932, the White Company replenished with the White 691 heavy truck model. This truck was used as a truck tractor with a saddle load of up to nine tons, but there were variants in the form of a three-axle chassis and even mining dump trucks. In 1933, the company launched the first models of the new 700 series with a cockpit and a more rounded plumage. Another novelty was the cab-over trucks of the 730 and 731 models, which were produced in 1935 to 1937, very unusual for their time. As a power unit, they used a 12-cylinder boxer engine previously developed for buses. November 1935. At the New York Auto Show, new cars of the 700 series were shown, the cab and exterior cladding of which were developed by Russian-born designer Alexei Soknovsky. The elements had a dashing shape that gave the trucks a stylistic resemblance to the latest American passenger cars on display. The subsequent series of white trucks retained this look until 1960. The new family included a large number of models from the delivery white 700P with a carrying capacity of 0. 0.75 tons to the 10-ton white 722A. Especially for these cars, six-cylinder engines with power from 80 to 133 horsepower were developed. In 1936, the production of cab-over trucks of the 800 series began. The 900 series appeared, which included three-axle variants of the 700 series machines. In 1939, the company began producing delivery vans of the White Horse series, with a rear-engine layout. After the U.S. entered World War II, the country's economy began to reconfigure for military orders, and from March 3, 1942, the production of trucks and buses for civilian needs was strictly limited. The White Company began production of military equipment M3A1 Scout Car Armored Reconnaissance Vehicles, M2 Half-Track Car and M3 Half-Track Personnel Carrier Half-Track Armored Personnel Carriers, self-propelled gun mounts based on them, as well as trucks 6-ton white 666, 6x6, and 10-ton white 1064, 6x4. In total, until 1944, 20,894 M3A1 armored vehicles were built as well as 15,414 half-track armored personnel carriers and self-propelled artillery mounts based on them. In 1944, White joined the production of the autocar U7144T, 4x4, 4-5-ton class truck tractor, giving it the designation White 444T. In parallel with military equipment, city buses were also produced, they were used for round-the-clock delivery to work of personnel of enterprises fulfilling military orders. In 1946, the WA series of trucks was replaced by improved WB series vehicles with a bonnet layout. In late 1948, they were replaced by the WC series with all-metal cabs and new superpower engines ranging from 100 to 184 horsepower. At the same time, the production of cab-over trucks of the 3000 series with an unusual tilting cab was launched. At the end of 1949, the regular assembly of trucks with diesel engines began. In October 1953, the last buses of our own manufacture were built. Nevertheless, the production of bus chassis based on trucks continued. In 1954, 
the most powerful engines of the Super Power Series were replaced by six-cylinder gasoline engines of the Mustang Series with a capacity of 130 to 215 horsepower. In the fall of 1955, in parallel with the production of heavy trucks of the WC Series, the assembly of 9000 Series vehicles began, which for many years became the flagships of the lineup. They differed from their predecessors in a short hood and a raised cabin. Meanwhile, trucks and WC were rapidly becoming obsolete. They were supposed to be replaced by trucks of the 2000th and 4000th series. Heavy trucks of the 4000 series appeared on the market at the end of 1956, from the 9000 series trucks, they were distinguished by a long hood. Since 1958, under the name White 2000, medium-class trucks Rio C300 began to be sold. In 1959, White launched the 5000 series truck tractors with a tilting fiberglass cab above the engine. This was the first use of fiberglass in the manufacture of truck cabs in the United States. Aluminum alloys were also widely used in the design of tractors, which, along with the use of a lightweight cab, made it possible to reduce their weight by almost a ton compared to similar machines. However, due to the fragile cabin, these tractors did not gain popularity. In 1960, the production of compact trucks with a cab over the engine of the 1500 series, or compact, began. They are designed for urban transportation and towing semi-trailers over short distances. In early 1962, to replace the 5000 series truck tractors, the 7000 series tractors with an angular aluminum cab were launched. In 1966, trucks of the 4000 and 9000 series significantly changed their appearance, they received a new plumage, and instead of a two-seater cab, created according to the sketches of A. Soknovsky, a driver cab type cab, developed back in 1950 by Autocar for their trucks. In 1968, the new cab over trucks of the 6000 Expeditor Series appeared, occupying an intermediate position between the 1500 Series cars and the 7000 Series mainline tractors. White has completed the production of gasoline engines. In 1972, the 7000 Series tractors were replaced by new cab over vehicles of the Road Commander Series. The following year, 1973, the 4000 and 9000 series trucks were replaced by White Road Boss vehicles. Ah, in 1974. Instead of cars of the 1500 and 6000 series, they began producing trucks of the Road Expeditor series. Soon they were replaced by cars of the Road Commander 2, 1975, Road Expeditor 2 and Road Boss 2 series. Their main feature was the new unified aluminum cabs, designed to meet the requirements of aerodynamics. In 1980, the assembly of the third-generation Road Boss Series trucks was started. In the same year, after the bankruptcy of the company, the Cleveland plant was closed, and all production was concentrated at the plants in Orville, Ohio, and New River, Virginia. In 1983, Road Boss trucks were once again upgraded. They were named after the types of cabin conventional, without a sleeping compartment, an integral sleeper, with a sleeping compartment combined with a cabin. These cars received decorative radiator linings in the form of a diagonal strip, like Volvo trucks. In 1984, the production of updated cabover truck tractors, called High Cabover, was launched. In 1987, new and last trucks of the white brand appeared on the market, the description of which is worth dwelling on. These were two-axle and three-axle truck tractors with aerodynamic plumage of the conventional Aero series, without a sleeping compartment, an integral sleeper Aero, with a sleeping compartment combined with a cab, a variant with a sleeping compartment of increased height was called the Integral Sleeper Aero ES. The drag coefficient of the new cars was reduced by 11 to 12 percent compared to previous models, which, in addition to the plumage, was also facilitated by fairings on the cab roof. Models included in the new series received the WCA, Conventional Aero Series, and WIA, Integral Sleeper Aero Series, indices. By order, tractors of the Aero family were equipped with diesel engines with a capacity of up to 450 horsepower. The 1987 white truck lineup included conventional, integral sleeper, integral sleeper ES and integral tall sleeper tractors, conventional Aero, integral sleeper Aero and integral sleeper Aero ES streamline tractors, high cab over cab over tractors and utility vehicles Expeditor series. Thus, 1987 became the last in the history of white trucks. Since January 1, 1988, began a short life of a new brand, White Tank.